Okay, say whatever you want, but this is the best main menu ever. I mean, this is glorious. I love it. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Epoch and this is the best loading screen ever. I mean, wow. This is, I, I, yeah. This is just the loading screen in the main menu, but I'm already way too positive. Today we're going to be playing MMO RPG Tycoon 2, or Massive Multiplayer Online Role Playing Game Tycoon Number 2. And while I'm going to be playing it, I just really want to show you guys why I like this game so much. So, if you don't know this game, it's very understandable because the only reason that I know about it is because the Steam Gods recommended it to me. Uh, you can get it right now for about 20 euros, I, and that may be around 30 dollars or something, but um, I will leave a link to the Steam store in the description down below. Now, the reason that I like this game is because you can make your own MMO. Yeah, you probably already figured that from the name, but it is really well executed. Now, let me just explain how it all starts so when you go into new game you can choose which kind of subscription model you want to choose so you can say for example um base purchase i think the base purchase for my game is about 40 dollars and then the subscription price per month is 10 dollars so that's pretty much the same like for example world of warcraft and okay so now you have a product but you still need to give them a world to live in. So what do you do is when you start the game, after choosing which kind of subscription model you want to offer and what kind of um, players you want to suit. So for example, role player, storytelling, PvP or just a free to play game with microtransactions is also an option. But I haven't played that one just yet because it's a little bit more advanced. But when you play, when you start this game, this is what you start out with. So I started out with this content, which was all grayed out. Now these are automatically generated. So you're, if you are starting a new game in this game, it will look completely different. So you may have two continents, you may only have one continent, you may have more islands, but you can still change the islands and the structure. And you can always uh, raise some zones from the sea level. Anyway. You pick whichever zone you like. Now, my very first zone that I picked was this one right over here. Um, but I will show you with another one. So, for example, we're going to take this one. So, this is Windsong. And so, this one is an inactive region. It's not being used in my game right now. What you can do is you can go to terrain and you can pick whichever kind of terrain this will have. So, for example, if I want this to be all field with just a few mushroom groves, it will give me that. I can also, um, later on, and then I can go with my terrain tool and then I can, for example, click on, if I'm working in this zone, then I can just uh, click here and for $100, I will get some extra trees here because this zone is mainly based out of uh, fields and forest. And if I have some other things in this list, then I will be able to add some more styles. For example, this one is Desert, Pine Forest, Chasm and Forest, so I can introduce all kinds in my uh, little zone. Once you have a zone with the style you like, then you can activate it and then you can decide what kind of level the zone will be. So, for example, these are my two level one zones. Um, so players will arrive here to something called the starting point, I think it's believed. I think it's called. Uh, let's go interact. Yeah, starting point. So there are two of these in my world. So there's one in this zone and one in the other zone. And players will, can do quests here. And once they level, they can move on to level two, either of these two zones, level three, and then level four is the max level zone right now. But you know, of course, this is gonna expand quite a bit. But once you find the zone you're happy with, you assign the level, what you can do then now is you can do a few things. You can first, you're gonna plant down a city. Now these, uh, some of the decorative pieces, some are, you know, really buildings you really want to have. So for example, the inn. So this is the place where your um, players will make their home. So it's pretty much their hearthstone or whatever. Then you also have a blacksmith, a potion shop, and some regular shops that just sell the loot they gain from monsters. 
and the landmark that's pretty much um, you know it's kind of a guide for for the players to come to this city actually they will use this city a lot more because it has a landmark it's yeah they're not there is only one landmark and I hope they will introduce a few more because this is an early access game I haven't mentioned it just yet so this will uh, probably improve at least I hope so um, and then you can have multiple NPCs here like guards and class trainers now we're gonna come back to the class trainers in a second and then we have these guys over here so these are the quest givers they're pretty much standard you know if you if you let me click on him for some reason he doesn't really want to help me with that oh, that's maybe because I still have a landmark open yeah so this is a player I just clicked on a player oh come on only when I'm recording so here we have Ilorka the Enlightened so this is a scout NPC so he has a few quests that he offers the player so for example go to the shop and sell your loot but also go to the crocodile zone and kill five crocodiles go to the bear zone and kill five bears now these are entry level um, places so the monsters aren't that complicated but for example here you see our players killing the crocodiles now the crocodiles are monsters and at the start you have five months uh, three monsters to choose from no no three play three player classes and four monsters sorry they just changed that in the latest update so um for example we have now five player classes because i already unlocked a few because i have 5600 subscribers but normally you only have these three or a few others they're already randomized and then you also have the monsters the game lags a little bit when it's saving now you normally only start with four of these and i already changed a few and created my own so let me just sh quickly show you so for example we're gonna take out of the characters we're gonna take the paladin the paladin is an s tier so that means he's most popular of the most of them. I think the Paladin and the Scout are the most popular ones right now. And the other ones are D tier because they should be buffed and I should do that sooner or later. But anyway, so for example, we go to the Paladin and this is pretty much the same thing for um, player classes and monsters. I can choose his stats. So I can increase his health, I can decrease his health. I can give him abilities. So, for example, when you create, when you get, you know, the game gave me Paladin, which I was able to change that if I wanted to, but you know, Paladin is like a cookie cutter character class in an MMORPG, so yeah. So, we have the ability list, and for example, at level 1, he gets Strike, so that's what they start out with, and f for free, he does target health minus 1 and self rage 1. Divine Hammer, he also learns at level 1, 1 second cooldown. But you can change all these. For example, the Holy Light I set up at, at the cost of minus 5 mana, he will heal himself for 8 points. And these are super easy to add. So for example, I can add for like at level 6, I can say cooldown of 60 seconds. I can say at the cost of his own health, if he goes like a Dark Paladin or whatever. For example, at the f cost of minus 5, he can... Um, do damage to the target's rage, mana, whatever. He doesn't want to give me his target health because it's already up there. But I can say, for example, um, that he will gain plus 5 mana and he can do minus 20 health, for example. Now, this is overpowered and I won't leave it in the game, but then I can just click also a color for the uh, attack effect and that's his new skill now of course i'm not going to use that because that would be overpowered and i already need to nerf these guys probably and you can then you can also change this model so these things are all offered in both monster version and the player class version so i can give him different hats i can give him a different torso no that's a tail oops i a different torso i can give him spider legs um that's so weird and i love it for it i can also change the way that he runs so for example like this now i've gone i'm not gonna save this because you know that would be a little bit too crazy but for example you can change the colors on the spider and change its uh, tail a little bit so i for example i created this guy so this is a 
mutated penguin with scorpion blood inside of him. Uh, you can change his ability, so he has Wing Slap, Tail Whip, Ice Shard, and Stinger. Now, for example, Ice Shard is a, something you, you can guess at missile range with one second cooldown. So, yeah. And you can just throw down these monsters in zones and then have the quests link up to them. So, for go kill that guy. And if you want some kind of bosses, we can also... Normally I have a boss around here. But I think the player's already killed him and he still needs to respawn. But you can also add elite monsters. So these are pretty much the same character models, the same attacks, but they're just a lot stronger. Now I have a few... Like I have one set up here. Now I actually have two set up here, but one died already. So this is for example, he has a name. When I can click on these. So this is Demodov the Elite Panda Man. With 80 health. And this is our Orc with a tail. Tusk Nash. So these have the same abilities, but they're just a lot stronger. And yeah, you can create awesome zones. You can create these monsters. And for example, here I have this uh, little undead uh, village set up. So he, the players can come here and come kill some skeletons. There is a boss over here. Um, I have no clue what his name is, but he's a little bit bigger than the, all the rest, as you can see. Task broken, so he's the elite skeleton. The quest giver for that zone is right here, and they can come here and kill these guys with all the scenery. For example, here you have, um, you know, a city on a siege. Well, not siege, surrounded by enemy camps, and as here over here a city with some scenery pieces around it. Now the scenery pieces are pretty dirty sheep, but they're pretty cool to use and make these zones very unique. Or you can play a little bit like the terrain, like I did here. So mainly working with the mushroom uh, forest and the chasms. Um, now, honestly, I'm still unlocking a lot of these things because there's also a skill tree that for some reason you can't consult uh, whenever you want, but only when you are leveling up. Um, but I think the this game is pretty awesome, honestly. I uh, um, I have still pretty much bare bones zone so to keep the players busy while I'm ranking in cash. I'm at 70k, so I can build a few things right now, which could be fun. For example, here I have this city under siege. So we have two camps on the outs outer walls and one camp that's already a little bit inside the city and still tries to get in further while the city is built around these dragon bones, for example. Oh, and these are, by the way, the class trainers that I wanted to mention earlier. So these are three, one of the three kinds of NPC. So and the players can come to talk to these guys and get their new abilities when they are leveled up. It's best to keep them in every town there is. Um, but yeah, guys, that is it. Now, there is also a lot more going on behind the scenes. Because, for example, you also have the network function. Now, the network function is mainly um, giving bandwidth to the NPCs and the buildings so actually the buildings and the NPCs won't work uh, without any bandwidth. Now this is mainly just to add a, an additional cost to not only make have this be in create your own MMO, MMO world but also you know an MMO game. Uh, so this is also bandwidth and uh, you know for example you can also add servers to prevent lag if you click on this zone for example you can also see the a number of users logged in the number of residents that are signed in into the um, region and then the login queue now i made two different level ones because i had just way too many players in this first zone for that reason i have started uh, splitting them up the terrain the scenery pieces are huge and i mean this is early an early access game so i am really happy with it i'm planning to you know, spend a lot of hours in this game because it's just really something up my alley, to be honest. It's a simulation management game with some creative aspects. Um, it's early access, but the uh, developers already mentioned on their Steam website that on their Steam page that they will not, they won't increase the price um, if the development uh, progresses further or even when it's officially released. They will also always keep the price at what it is right now. So if you say like, hey. 
it looks okay, but I really don't want to spend any cash on an early ca access game or one this soon in the uh, early access phase. You can always just say like, hey, I will wait and I can spend, and you can spend the same money later on if you still want to buy it at that point. But guys, it's just a game that I really want to recommend. I think it's a really awesome game. I've already spent quite a few hours with it. I've already been playing a little bit around with it. And just see what is possible. Now, it is still a little bit bare bones, but once again, it's an early access game. And I think with a little bit of creativity, you can do quite some cool things in this game. But anyway, guys, that's it. Let me know in the comments below, below if you know about this game, if you want to see a Let's Play version of this game, for example. I would really be open for that, but if you guys would like to see that. But I just think it's a cool game, and I just can only recommend it. Guys, I want to thank you all for watching, and if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. Guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya!